Hi everyone and welcome back to episode 22 of the Springwood Security course. In the previous episode, we saw how to create a custom login form and today we are going to see how we can integrate our custom login form with the form-based authentication mechanism. And you'll see it's pretty easy, just a couple of lines of code, but once we have that, uh, we are on our way to using form-based authentication. Now, before we get started, I would like to remind you to hit the like button and subscribe to this channel to stay tuned for courses that will sharpen your programming skills. We are back to our custom login page, which worked just fine. And like I said, we need to do a couple of modifications to the security configuration class. Now, um, these access rules, you know, uh, are perfectly fine. We'll keep them. What will change instead is this. So in order to authorize requests, I'm going to be using the same rules, roles and authorities that we have been using up until now. But instead of performing authentication using the HTTP basic method, we'll use form based authentication. And in order to enable that, we need to delete this. And now we have to say, um, I think is and yeah, form login. And then we have to provide a login page, which in our case is, sorry, it's dash login. Okay. And now we have configured Spring Security to, perf to perform authentication using form-based, uh, using the form-based method. We have configured form-based authentication using a default login page of dash login, which is the page that we just created. And now all the, authori all the authorization rules will be the same. And if, of course, the authentication provider is still going to be the database one. So just two lines of code and we now enabled form-based authentication. Okay, let's run our application and see that everything performs as expected. Okay, our application started, so we go to local host 882. Okay, advanced. I'm going to add this exception. Okay, and of course, now if we go to login, okay, we can type then, then one to three, we'll hit the login button okay and now we can see that now we can view our profile of course if you go to admin we are still don't have the privileges but for all intents and purposes the form based authentication worked however there is one more thing that we need to add in here although you know it, it, it's kind of the default behavior but you know we should really add this permit all to the login page because everybody needs to access uh, the login page. Okay, so that's why we permit everybody uh, to access this page. And now let's fire up the application again because I also want to show you what happens if you try to go directly to uh, a secured resource without performing an initial login. Okay, so our application fired up. I'll refresh it and let's try to go to admin, okay? And you notice that by default now, we are redirected back to the login page, which is the correct and expected behavior. Now, if I'm using the administrator's credentials, I hit login and now boom, I can access the admin page, my profile page, the management page, pretty much uh, every resource that has been authorized for the admin uh, role. Cool. Now, before we close, I just want to um, uh, point to something really important. Now, we have configured, you know, our login page. Uh, we have configured um, form-based authentication, but we do not handle authentication in our code. So, for example, if we take this uh, login form here, 
this post method to dash login, you know, we, we do not have it implemented anywhere, okay? So we have a get mapping for login which returns the login view, but nowhere inside our controllers do we have a handler for dash login using a post method. So the authentication is actually built into Spring Security. So Spring Security by default, uh, if we point Spring Security to a login page and Spring Security can then, you know, uh, interpret the credentials by using these naming conventions over here for, for username and password, then the authentication mechanism is handled automatically by Spring Security. So Spring Security extracted this credential information, then Spring Security used our database provider to grab um, our user to perform authentication using that, and then if that was successful, then uh, it directed us to the desired page. So we didn't have to write any implementation for the actual authentication. It's all uh, been handled by uh, Spring Security, and this is a pretty cool thing. Remember what I told you in the beginning of this course? Spring Security is mostly about configuration. So if you know how Spring Security works and what are the available options, then doing stuff in Spring Security is really not that difficult. You just have to configure stuff because most of the heavy lifting is already implemented for you. Okay, uh, and one more thing that I want to show you. Now, because we are logged in, okay, remember what I told you that, um, I hope I can manage this. I would really like to show you. Um, I would really like to show you the cookie, but I'm not sure if I am allowed to do it. Okay, permissions. Okay, no. So I'll use I'll use an instance of Chrome for that. So we go to local host 8082. Okay. Okay, and I will use Dan, Dan123, login. Okay, and remember how form-based authentication works. If the authentication was successful, a session uh, is created on the server, and that session has a session ID, and that session ID is sent back to the client in a cookie. And then, you know, the form-based mechanism uses that cookie to authenticate our requests. You know, if you don't remember this, you can check out the theoretical episodes from the beginning of this course. But that's how form-based authentication works. And I want to show you, after we authenticate it with success, that we have a cookie here. And this cookie is called J session ID, and it contains the session ID uh, after we have authenticated into our application. So, you know, the theory, you know, is the same with um, with practice, and you, you should be aware of this because sometimes in debugging it's use, it's it's useful to link um, the session ID with the session on the server. Maybe you want to do some debugging. Maybe you want to uh, make a query and grab this session from somewhere, and this is how you can find it. Okay, cool. Now, now that we have implemented uh, authentication and login. Uh, we kind of need to log out because, you know, users, of course, want this feature. And in the next episode, we'll see how to implement logout in form-based uh, security. Before we close, I would like to remind you to subscribe to this channel and stay tuned for more software development tutorials that will sharpen your programming skills. Just go to the Romanian Coder YouTube page and click on the subscribe button. Also, if you found this video useful, please hit the like button and share it with your friends. If you have any comments, thoughts or ideas for new courses, just put them in the comment section at the end of this video because I would love to get feedback from you guys. You can also find me on Twitter at RomanianCoder and you can also check out my blog www.RomanianCoder.com Until next time, have a great day and write amazing code. Goodbye!